Hello, my wee little bookners, my wee little bookworms or book dragons, whichever one you may identify as. How are you doing on this fine day? You doing good? I hope you are. I've got a joke for you. What does a baby computer call its father? Data. <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I do this. So, yeah, I hope you're all doing good. Uh, today, we are here to talk about... The Whistling by Rebecca Netley. Now, this book... <clears throat> I don't even know where to start with this book. This, this, is, this is the issue right now. So this is a gothic horror historical fiction thing of a book. It is 384 pages and it was published in 2021. When I first heard of this book, I was actually really excited about it. And every time I saw it, I kept forgetting that I bought a copy and ended up with three copies. And I gave one to Ben from Ben's Book Corner and I sent one to my friend Greg. But I was really excited to read this because I heard some good things about it. But what can I say about this book? Not a lot. Let me read to you the blurb. And then I'll talk about what other people have said about this book. And then my thoughts on not only just the characters, but the story and everything else about the book. It's the best way that I can formulate what I want to say in the most nicest way possible. So, here we go. So, when Elspeth arrives on a remote Scottish island to become nanny to a young child, she hopes to bond with her. Until she learns that that girl has not spoken for months. And Mary's silence is not the only mystery. Hypnotic lullabies drift down empty corridors, strange dolls appear in abandoned rooms, and as the night draws in, darker questions arise. What happened to Mary's late twin, William? Why did their previous nanny disappear so suddenly? And is the whistling Elspeth hears at night just the storm outside? Or is there something else out there? Dun dun dun! Apparently, uh, readers are chilled by the whistling. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go into this pretty heavy handed. I was extremely disappointed in this book. I hate that this book also says, uh, feel shivers down your spine with this chilling and gripping ghost story set on a far flung Scottish island. I mean, it's definitely on a, a Scottish island. Is, do I get shivers down my spine? Was this chilling and gripping ghost story? No. It was not. Uh, the only reason why I'm in this is because my room is actually cold for once. That's the only reason why I have this. Not because of the book. Not because of this book that is a lie. <laughs> I'm really upset by this book. It's just wonderfully atmospheric. It has a little bit of atmosphere. I wouldn't say it's eerie or wonderfully spooky. Uh, gripping, chilling, and very, very satisfying. It is not Daily Mail. You lie. This leaves a lot to be desired. I... The ending that I guessed that it was going to be when I first started reading this is better than the ending we got. <laughs> uh, a ghost story that kept me guessing. No, the only reason... <sighs> so, the book is like, oh, it could, like, something's happened in this book. It could be this person this island. But wait, no, it can't be them. They're long gone. But it could be this person. No, actually, maybe not. Though it would make sense. No, it's going to be this person. No, I changed my mind. It's going to be this person. Oh, it's going to be this person. It turns out to be someone completely different who has nothing to do with the story. Cool. Uh, Pair for a cold winter's night? No. No. Maybe to burn as kindling. Uh, it will chill you to the bone. It did not chill me to the bone. I was very bored throughout the whole 380 something pages. If you're looking for a chilling tale as we head towards Halloween, you found it. Y'all are liars. It is not what it is advertised as. So at the back of the book, it does not tell you anything that it is a historical fiction. The reason why I figured out is when you open it and you finally get to the chapter, it's like 1860. And everything is written as in that time, which is fine. I love things written like that. I have nothing wrong. I like my historical fiction. This is the most blandest book and storytelling I've ever had. And it's pretty much like a journal from Elspeth. It's not supposed to be, but that's the way that it comes off as. And it's like, oh, I arrived in this island. I met the people. I sleep, but I hear humming, but I go back to sleep. Then I wake up. Then I go back to sleep later on in the day after doing some chores. And I hear the humming again, but I go back to sleep because I'm a poussoir. 
and that's pretty much the story that is pretty much the story until we get to like the last like 40 pages of the book uh there's a lot of characters in this book as well so we have elspeth who's the main person uh supposedly around the mid 20s uh she's originally from edinburgh so cool i guess uh and she's pretty much grieving the loss of not only her dad, but her younger sister as well, who she's literally a carer for. Uh, then we have, so that's character one, okay? That's the main character. That's the, the, the whole point of view that we have is Elspeth, which I love the name for. I That's something I can say I like about her character is that. Um, Grey, uh, who is a female, who is the maid. We have Violet, who pretty much runs the whole, like, how she is the aunt of the child Mary, uh, because her sister, Evangeline, um, died. So she's literally much the only person who can care for this child now in this huge house that doesn't need to be as big as it is. Uh, but we have Mary. So Elspeth, Greer, Violet, Evangeline. We've got Mary, the nine-year-old girl, who is grieving obviously the loss of her mother and brother. We have William. We have Bridget, who is just like a neighbor. We have Patterson, who owns the sweet shop, who is a pig and a womanizer. We have Hetty, who was the old nanny who disappeared, but it's pretty much around in the story somehow. We have Robert, and then we have Alyssa. So that's 11 characters. I'm not including some characters already, but that is 11 characters we basically have to deal with in conversation throughout this whole book that is very bland. It's, it's like watching a thriller and there was no thrill. It was nothing. It was, it was, it was, it's, the characters were bland. The story was extremely bland. I expected so much more. And I think that's what my issue was. I held like such a candle to this book. And then it's called The Whistling. Was there much whistling in this book? No, but it talked of a whistle known as a widow's whistle, which is made from the bone and the skin of a dead person. And that's pretty much all we know. We don't know how it would sound or anything like that, but... It, it, like there's been like two or three whistles throughout the whole book it was it was it was i don't know why it's called the whistling it was more about the humming that someone would do as they walked the hallways it was more about the humming of a english nursery rhyme and that is basically it i would rate this a one star i was very disappointed in it the writing wasn't the greatest the storytelling wasn't the greatest the characters were extremely bland i didn't have any connection with any of the characters Nothing really stood out with them. There was a lot of characters to try and remember. So sometimes the names and who we were talking to would get forgotten and easily mixed up. Or I forget that person existed because I don't know why they had a name and why they were in the book. But they were there for a moment and then they weren't or they turned up later on. It's It was a mess of a book. It, it just frustrates me because I, I genuinely thought there would be more. I bought three copies of this for no reason. I expected more. Now I know... Uh, Rebecca Netley's only released two books. This is one of them. Another one is something to do with feathers. And then she released them in German for some reason. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe I didn't do enough research into the actual author themselves. But I can I can see where they're coming from in a really strange way. I love my gothic horror. There's some amazing gothic horrors out there. Unfortunately for me, this is not it. But obviously, like always, this is my own opinion with these sorts of things. I always recommend people to go out and do their, like, read their own things, get their own opinions of things. While they, some people may agree with me, others will not. Do you know what it is, though? A lot of things weren't described in a way that would made it chilling for me. Sure, some of the atmosphere was there, but description-wise, there wasn't much there. There wasn't really much, like, world-building in it either. It was pretty much, here is my view of something to do with a child. That sounds terrible. And it just became frustrating because while I was kind of like pushing for this story that I thought was going to happen and I kept trying to push it like, I'm going to enjoy this. It'll be fine. As I got more and more into the book and I got towards the end, I was like, oh, that's really disappointing because at the end, it, it doesn't really end the way you think it's going to end. And it's pretty much, it's not like, how in some stories, like, oh, they go off into the distance in the sunset. It's pretty much like, yeah, they did this thing, the end. And it's like, well, what about the aftermath of it? Where's that for me for the ending? Because I like to know about the aftermaths. Because, like, no matter what story we're going to read, there's always going to be something where it's like, this is what happened, and this is what's gone on since. And it's kind of like, like, it really closes the book. This one, it's kind of open-ended. I don't know what to expect from it. I, f I just wanted more. 
so much more than what I actually got. But I hope you enjoyed the review. I was very disappointed in the book and I'm very upset by it because I just expected more. The whole book is a lie. The the blurb on the back. Sure, they go they go to, to Scotland somewhere. Doesn't that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think of this review. If there's any books that you read that that you were mildly disappointed in or very disappointed in, let me know. I do have one question though for you. Oh. If there was a genre that you were absolutely like obsessed with, it was your go-to genre, and you wanted more people to go into that genre, what would you recommend? That's my question for you. Anyway, that's the end of the video. So yeah, I appreciate it. Make good decisions in life and love, love. Look after yourselves and I will catch you later.